And they said, no, we won't do that. It's too risky. I said, so you want to sell me $160,000 piece of equipment that you still won't guarantee will do the work that I'm doing? Like, am I, how big of a fool am I? It's October of 2023. 10 months later, it has 12 hours on it. It's worthless, it's a piece of junk. And so I said, all right, send your field tech down here. I paid basically $480 for him to come down here, sit around on the phone with JCB, sending emails back and forth for them to say, ah, it's gotta get brought into the shop. So I basically wasted $480 and now I have to take it into the shop anyways so that they can diagnose whatever it is. They have no clue what it is. I'm gonna to try to keep this as objective and not negative as possible, but it could be tough. But if you're thinking about buying a JCB, I'd like you to watch this video because then you might not want to buy a JCB anymore. And if you do, there's something wrong with you. So let's get to it. I bought both these machines at the very end of 2022. I watched a lot of videos on this particular machine and I thought it looked really cool. What I don't like about skid steers is the front door and you're kind of pinned in there if your load's this high and you're trying to get out and move something around, which I like to do a lot and I couldn't do it. And so the side load I thought was great. Over a 12,000 pound machine, comparable in weight to my 30, 33G, 3033, my 333G that I had, uh, 75 horsepower versus 100 horsepower, a little bit less hydraulic flow, but not a lot less hydraulic flow. It's turned out to be a big concern of mine that um, this doesn't have enough oomph in it to move that same amount of weight compared to the 333 that's got a lot of oomph to move all of that weight. And so when you're on flat ground, it's just fine. But when you're going up hills, you can hear it strain. When this machine tries to pick a full load, a full scoop of dirt, it can struggle. Nothing ever struggles with the 333G, but this costs the same amount of money as a 333G. The cool thing about this is that it will telescope out. This boom will go out eight foot. I thought that that would be a really handy feature. I've used it maybe once. I'm sure it's convenient for some people, but that person is not me and it is not worth it at all. I haven't got to the bad stuff yet though, but I bought this machine as well. This is a 407 wheel loader. Now, this was kind of at the tail end of the pandemic, pandemic recovery, I suppose, when supply chain was still pretty disrupted. I couldn't find these machines anywhere. I started with my local JCB dealer. They didn't have anything. I branched out, went further and further away. Eventually, I just was looking online and calling around. I finally found a place in Kentucky that had both of these machines here. I wanted this machine to replace my 333G. I wanted this machine to lift really heavy loads with pallet forks at our, our shop, at my business. I needed tax write-offs. Basically, for every $100,000, in very layman's terms, $100,000 means I was saving $30,000 that I didn't have to pay the government. That $30,000 is gonna be gone either way, whether I write a check and give it to the government or put it towards a piece of equipment. And so I chose, let's go buy a piece of equipment and keep that $30,000 in something fun, or so I thought. So I did the same thing on this as well. I should have taken this as a sign, but while they're waiting to find a truck to deliver this up to me in Michigan where I'm at, the 407 wheel loader that I was gonna buy actually melted off this whole side of it. A used tractor came in, they parked it right next to the wheel loader and then overnight it spontaneously combusted, caught on fire and then melted all the plastic and everything else all on this side of it. At that point, I should have just said, oh, that's fine, I won't take it. And given the government $30,000, I would have been a lot better off doing that. Instead, they found the only other 407 wheel loader in the whole country in Colorado. I do appreciate them, them looking so hard for me and then securing that and getting that for me, which is what you see now. This machine, it's October of 2023. 10 months later, it has 12 hours on it. It's worthless, it's a piece of junk for what we need it for. Now, let me rephrase that. It's worthless for what we need it for. It's not necessarily a piece of junk because of that. But I was very, very clear on what we needed to do with the wheel loader. We had to lift eight foot long skids of snow pushers. That weigh five, 6,000 pounds, somewhere in there. They vary depending on the configuration of all the stuff that's stacked on there. And it needs to be able, able to lift it off of semi flatbeds onto the ground and then move around at our shop. <clears throat> so they said, no problem, it can do that, that's fine. So as soon as we had this piece of equipment delivered, the first thing that we went to do was put forks on it, skid steer quick attach, that's cool, and then go lift a skid of snow pushers around, and we couldn't even lift it off the ground. We contact them, they say, make some hydraulic tweaks, we did that, it still didn't lift it off the ground. 
let alone off of a semi. This is stuff that was just a stack of them that was sitting on the ground. I say, this doesn't do us any good. This is completely worthless to us. Will you take it back? No. But we will take it back if you buy a new one from us, a bigger one, one that costs $160-some-thousand. I said, well, will that one lift up what we need? So they went out to their yard and took some videos lifting some big concrete blocks that were basically the same amount of weight way up in the air and then way back down. <clears throat> I said, well, how about you position that weight out like the center load is of an eight-foot skid instead of right next to the frame of the, the machine? They said, no, we won't do that. It's too risky. I said, so you want to sell me $160,000 piece of equipment that you still won't guarantee will do the work that I'm doing? Like, am I, how big of a fool am I? I'm already a pretty big fool. Maybe you just thought you could take me again. So anyway, that's why this machine has 12 hours on it because it's completely worthless to me, unusable. We have all sorts of other equipment that's a lot easier to use that lifts everything else that we need off. We figured out another solution to our problem anyway. That's a good thing uh, that came out of that. <clears throat> the only other thing I don't like about this, two other things I don't like about this, Number one, how you disconnect the hydraulic quick coupler on this loader. You have to push in a button with one hand and then use your other hand on the loader joystick to push another button to disconnect it. Super stupid. It should just be one button that you push to release and then another button to push to connect. I'll show you that process in a second here. It doesn't make any sense. The other thing I don't like about this is the fact that the little bit that I have used it, I've scooped some dirt up and put it in some different areas and then just like you would do with any other loader bucket, want to back drag it backwards and just kind of smooth and grade the whole thing out. This pops off the, the skid steer quick attach constantly. You can't even do anything with it. It just literally the bucket pops off all the time. There you go just like that that's how you take it off take a look at those pins can't even see them right now. that's pretty cool how neat is that i can't even see if they're moving are they moving i can't even see them that's as far as i go right Good or no? I'll try it again. Let's see if it does it again. Oh, it's locked in there now, though, huh? You just gotta hold it down forever, like for like for a minute. So we've discovered with somebody watching it up there, another set of eyes up there, that after you hold this down for 30 or more seconds, would you say, is when those hydraulic pins on the SSQA will continue to slowly creep down. You just never know how much is enough. But then once they finally get there after a, a guesswork amount of time, then your bucket will stay on the loader. So that's pretty cool. It's, it's like a fun little game that you get to play and just see if it works or not each time that you hook up an attachment. So I don't know. I mean, I think JCB might have an angle there, you know, the fun wheel loader. Folks, we are proud to be sponsored by RimGuard Solutions, a liquid ballast weight. It goes right inside your tires, completely hidden, we're big on safety on this channel. These tractors are just too light and tippy right out of the factory. Not only is it gonna help with safety, keeping those rear tires planted on the ground, it helps with loader efficiency and traction too. The benefits of RimGuard include being the heaviest all natural liquid ballast weight on the market. It's not gonna corrode your rims like the old calcium chloride. It's not gonna freeze. And it's available at over a thousand dealers nationwide. Find the dealer near you at RimGuardSolutions.com. That's all I have to say about that machine. 
So this one, <clears throat> I was going to actually dump this, this bucket out. It's full of water right now. You may be asking yourself, man, how lazy are you? Why wouldn't you just do that for the video? Problem is, is this loader doesn't lift up. It'll curl and roll and it'll move, it'll drive, but the loader won't lift up. And I know what you're thinking. It's probably a high hour machine. It's got 30 hours on it. So it's really pushing it. And uh, again, it's 10 months old and uh, the air conditioning, I don't know if it's worked ever. Um, the first four or five months it was winter, so I didn't really need the air conditioning. And then when I started to need air conditioning, I was, it was like a sauna, I was just sweating. And that's, uh, I've used all my other machines mainly because I don't really like sweating a lot inside a cab. I don't need to lose that much weight. And so then just recently, I was gonna do some work around here, but somebody borrowed this from me and used it for a little bit. And then they said, hey, the loader doesn't lift up anymore. And I was like, you're doing something wrong. <clears throat> and then uh, they brought it back over here and I was like, what'd you do to it? And they were like, we didn't do anything. We were just using it and then it just stopped working. So I call up JCB. I said, hey, I got this thing. It's, it's 10 months old, hoping it's under warranty. Can you send a tech out to fix it? And they said, well, yeah, but we got to look and see what's covered under warranty and what's not. And you can bring it in here or we can send a tech out. I said, well, yeah, just send a tech out. And they said, well, there's a service call. I was like, that's fine. Everybody's got a service call, you know, for field, field stuff. And they said, and then you have to pay mileage on top of that. And I said, man, I got to pay mileage on top of that? $3.25 a mile. And from Grand Rapids, it's uh, like 108 miles round trip. They charge $3.25 a mile for both directions. And that's because I didn't buy it from them. I said, well, I would have bought it from you. You're the first place I went to, but you didn't have any. So what was I supposed to do? And they said I was out of luck. So anyway, I took a risk. I thought, man, 30 hours on this thing, it's got to be something simple that a field tech can fix. And so I said, all right, send your field tech down here. I paid basically $480 for him to come down here, sit around on the phone with JCB, sending emails back and forth for them to say, eh, it's got to get brought into the shop. So I basically wasted $480, and now I have to take it into the shop anyways so that they can diagnose whatever it is. They have no clue what it is. They switched some controls around and there's not enough milliamps coming through the control down to somewhere else and they think it's a control body or a, they don't know. And the problem is they can't do any of the work that they need to do with the boom down. So they have to do something at their shop to be able to get the boom up and then be able to diagnose it. And then after that, they can work on the air conditioning getting that fixed as well. <sighs> Trying to stay calm. It's crying, look at that, this thing's crying. It's, I'm sorry, making you sad. So about a month ago, it's like, you know what? I'm going back to a 333G. I'm going to get rid of this. I'm going to get a, a Mini X. And um, I thought about actually renting equipment out. I've been thinking about that for a long time. I don't use this equipment, this type of equipment, a lot anyway. It'd just be a good way to s offset the payments of it. I'm going to rent some tractors out, rent some tractor attachments, things like that too. Anyway, I worked all that out. And so I thought, I'm going to trade these in, get a 333G and a John Deere 50G Mini X. <clears throat> So I had uh, a John Deere dealer give me a quote on doing so. And as far as I can tell, I got, you know, of course I was told they're going to make me a deal. And from what I can tell, I was charged the regular market price for the 333G and the 50G, which is fine. But if you're going to make me a deal, then give me a decent trade-in offer on these. And so I paid $105,000 on each of these machines 10 months ago. They offered me $60,000 on trade for each of these. $45,000 less for a 10 month old machine with 12 hours on it. And at the time, a 10 month old machine, actually a nine month old machine with 27 hours on it. They offered me $45,000 less. And that was the good deal that they were making me. So I don't know if that's uh, the dealer. I don't know if, I mean, these go for, there's two or three of these on Facebook Marketplace that are like 95,000 right now with more hours on it than what, what this one has. And I'm asking 90,000 for it. <clears throat> so I'm offering like, I have the lowest price on there, $90,000. That was a nine zero, not six zero, not seven zero, not eight zero. So the John Deere dealer is gonna make me a good offer buying two brand new pieces of equipment and then giving me bottom dollar, bottom of the barrel dollar on trade-in. <clears throat> felt really good about that so I'm basically my, my point is is that think long and hard about buying these JCB machines I'm sure there's folks that like them but I do not and I'm telling you think long and hard about it because as soon as you sign your name on that dotted line it could cost you dearly 
whether you think so or not. I did forget to mention, this thing does have a fancy cab cam. So the dealer I got these from down there in Kentucky added a cab cam to both of the machines. And this one worked for three hours before it stopped working. So I was pretty, I don't know, I was pretty happy about that. Those three hours were pretty nice to know what was behind me. And now I just kind of, I don't know, I'm just going to guess and we see what happens. I haven't heard anybody squeal, scream, or anything like that yet. So we've been good to go. But uh, yeah, right now though, it's, it's, I don't know, it's just kind of nice to look at. It doesn't show anything, but it's, it's nice to look at. Well, besides that, decent machines, you know, so uh, they're for sale on our website. <clears throat> Yeah, one more thing too about auxiliary controls. You ran a dozer blade on here, it handled that well. Um, we got some, some flack on, on not knowing how to operate a machine. That's fair. Except for the fact that how you operate the auxiliary control in here to, to adjust the, uh, the, the tilt on the dozer blade, it doesn't tell you how to do it in the manual. And it's like, how are you supposed to know how to do it if the manual doesn't tell you how to do it? And you got to well, I don't even remember. It was a confusing thing. You got to press one button again, kind of like how on this thing. You got to press one button that you don't know. You're just, you're, there's like 300 combinations of things that you could do. And you're just pressing a button, then you push another one, and then that's when it tilts one way or the other. But it's like there was, it was stumbled upon. There was nothing in the manual about how to do this. The rep that we talked to didn't know. He said he'd have a service guy contact us who never contacted us. Just happened to stumble upon it and figure it out. So, it's like, you know, but that's really it. I mean, besides that, great machines, um, low hours, you're going to get a big savings over new. And you know what? I might just rent them out until I can get to that break-even point somewhere, too. I'm not going to take a big loss on them. It's just not, that's just stupid. So, anyway, that's the scoop on JCB. That's my experience. I'll never buy another JCB. Doesn't mean you shouldn't. I just think that uh, there's a lot of positive videos out there about JCB. And that was one of the reasons that I went that direction and I spent over $200,000 on it and have regretted it from basically day one. So if you want something besides the JCB though, we sell a lot of tractors and tractor attachments as well. And we ship those nationwide. I don't sell junk coming from Britain, if you get that joke. I sell good stuff. Most of it's made in the USA, made in Canada, some made in Italy good stuff though. I want to thank you for taking time out of your day to stop by and until next time stay safe. We'll see you soon.